I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Jonathan Byram, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Well, you, you are a sixth grade teacher at Bell Avenue Elementary. So tell us a little bit about your class and what you do. Great. Um, yeah, I, I teach sixth grade. Um, and so I get to do things from science projects to teaching life skills. Um, I get to teach algebra and math. Um, and it is a whole lot of fun. Um, I came from teaching second grade, so I made a pretty big jump up to sixth grade. And um, they understand sarcasm. And uh, <laughs> they make learning and teaching a lot of fun because they're older and they can participate with you. So it was a big jump from second to sixth. Yeah, yeah. Um, at first, I didn't know that I was going to like it. Um, but now that I've taught, you know, sixth grade the last couple of years, I don't know that I could go any lower than, you know, uh, sixth grade because they're independent and they're um, capable. And not to say that second graders aren't, but, you know, they're just at a different level and they're reading more interesting books. Um, and there's just so much to talk about with them uh, that it makes everything more enjoyable. So you were talking about, you know, talking with the students, mm -hmm. engaging in, in really good discussions and conversations. How important is it, you know, to really kind of implant in them good critical thinking skills and having these discussions? Absolutely. Um, one of our district initiatives this year um, has been disciplinary discussions. So we've been trying to get our kids to talk more, uh, to use their academic language. And so we've been teaching these explicit conversation skills um, and things that are natural to, to us. Um, but the, it's just amazing to see what kind of conversations that they can have. Um, and in order to have a good conversation, they have to be able to think critically and analyze whatever content we're discussing. Um, and so otherwise, they're just saying words. You know, um, We get them to really think deeply about um, what they've read or what they've talked about. And then they have to turn and say it to somebody else. Um, and it's just a fascinating um, way to teach, getting them to talk as much as you can. And also having, you know, supportive evidence in a discussion they have. Yeah, Not absolutely. Not just saying, I, because I say so. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's a huge part is that uh, for, we call it fortifying. You know, you're fortifying your conversation with uh, evidence from the text. And so they sound a lot smarter, um, and they, or at least they, they sound as smart as they are, right? They demonstrate um, what they're thinking a lot more clearly. And it's not, a, it's not an inborn skill. No, yeah. uh, no, it is not. Um, so at the beginning of the year when we were pioneering the work, we just sort of, you know, we had them have a conversation and uh, Jenna Ruby, my partner, and I were just walking around the room together, like pausing and listening to the conversations. And we kind of went, oh my gosh, like there's a lot that we need to teach them. We can teach them to paraphrase and repeat back what they, you know, what they've heard when they're confused. Um, they need to ask them more clarifying questions. And so um, we've just broke down conversation skills into, uh, manageable mini lessons and then we do it um, and and the transformation that they make is uh, incredible but then the transformation they have to make after sixth grade to go to middle school is really significant so mm -hmm. explain how sixth grade kind of lays the foundation for middle school and high school uh, yeah um, because our school is K-6, right? So our students are not in a traditional middle school where it's like six, seven, eight. Um, and so we start, you know, some of those uh, middle school skills here in sixth grade, they have different teachers or they have to transition. Um, and we kind of help them basically advocate for themselves. Because in middle school, you know, you're not gonna have your homeroom teacher who teaches math and reading and writing and science. You're gonna have a bunch of different teachers. So they have to um, be responsible for all their materials and be organized. They also have to identify like what they need help with. Um, because they're only gonna have 45 minutes to an hour with that one teacher, you know, each day. And so if they're not able to clearly articulate what they need help with um, here in sixth grade with us, then they might just shrink away. and They can't shrink away. If they're stuck, they, they have to ask for help. And so that's something that we really push for them in sixth grade is getting them to be uh, in charge of their own learning um, so that uh, they can you know, advocate for themselves later on because they're going to have to advocate for themselves. And again, that's not an inborn no. skill. That's no. something you really have to learn how to do. Uh, as, coming off of elementary school, you've had that one teacher. You get to know that one teacher. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty big change for them. And so, um, Starting about middle of the year, we kind of say, you know, you guys are getting ready for seventh grade here. Um, you're going to need to advocate for yourself, and you're going to need to know that um, you're going to need to be as respectful as possible because you have six different teachers, and if if uh, 
you don't know them as well, you may can't you can't joke with them, right? Like I can't crack jokes with you if I don't know you. Uh, the teacher's going to think you're being disrespectful. So you have to really make sure that you're aware and cautious of what you do and say in the classroom. And, and another part of the foundation is really focusing on their social and emotional mm -hmm. wellness. Yes, exactly. Uh, so all of our work with communication and, and discussions um, hopefully bleeds, and we do a lot of um, we do a lot of social skills and um, social emotional learning at our school and in our district. So building up their conversation skills then also helps them express how they're feeling as well, um, because they they are able to you know read someone's um, body language as a part of a discussion and kind of react as needed. Um, and, and that is a huge part of interacting in our world of technology where everything is text and mm -hmm. everything is Instagram um, and YouTube. Uh, they, they need to be taught those skills. Give me an example of, of how you would help someone with their social and emotional well-being. Great, uh, great question. Um, so we have two things in our room that, you know, that I do. Uh, one of the things we have right by our door is this um, X, Y axis, and it's an emotion kind of axis. And there's all, it's on grid paper, so all the squares, all the intersections are different emotions. Um, and so at the start of the day or at any point in the day, they can move their pin with their class number on it and just kind of point where they're at. Uh, that helps me because I can kind of get a quick read as like, oh, we're sleepy today or, you know, so-and-so's upset, so I maybe need to go check in with them. Um, and it helps tell their classmates like, hey, this is how I'm feeling and either, you know, give me some space or like, let's go hang. Um, another thing that we do is we help them just identify where they're at and where they're mm -hmm. feeling. And so sometimes if we're reading the room and something seems kind of off or if we want to do a writing, like quick write to start our day, we might say something like, today your prompt is, I'm feeling blank, I want to stay that way because, or I'm feeling blank and I want to change that, here's how I'm going to change it. Um, and we just kind of help them identify how they're feeling, self-regulate, check in with themselves. And those are two quick, easy things that we can do without any prep um, to kind of get them to regulate. And then we can have a class meeting um, when we look over there at the journals and see what's coming up um, and kind of address things. It's like a daily well. check-in. It's like a daily check-in, exactly. And that exactly. really helps you uh, navigate your day in, in working with the students. Absolutely. So, so explain for people who may not be aware, kind of your student population in the Rolo Great. District. Um, we have a, uh, a whole lot of English language learners. Um, around half of our district is English language learners. Um, we have a huge population, 94% um, I believe, uh, receive free or reduced lunch, which is almost our whole district. Um, so we come from a very uh, low income, um, high needs area. Uh, we have a, a sizable portion of foster youth and um, I said uh, a sizable portion of homeless students and a, size, and a huge portion of um, English language learners. So when you talk about the social and emotional awareness that a lot of that is all intertwined. Mm -hmm. Yes and, and, um, and some of my students um, they come with a lot of baggage and trauma and everyone has baggage um, but it's it's really eye-opening to see at such a young age you know some of the issues that our students are are dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, I was teaching second grade a couple of years ago and one of my students um, was talking about hearing gunshots on her front porch and, um, and, and I was in second grade and uh, you know that was just amazing and, and whether or not they were gunshots um, is kind of irrelevant because that's how the student was interpreting those loud noises and, right. and that shapes you know her perception shapes kind of how she reacts and how she acts and, and it's just astounding that that is a norm, you know, for some of our students. Mm. So what does it mean for you to be named as the teacher of the year for your district? Um, it's very humbling um, and it's very uh, uh, inspiring uh, and, and confidence building, I guess, for me. Um, I, I've been teaching, this will be my seventh year in August, so um, I, I don't have a wealth of experience, um, but I, um, I'm a go-getter, and so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be uh, acknowledged, but um, I also would like to acknowledge I have a lot of space to grow, um, and, and there are a lot of things, I think, um, that I can, I can do to get better at my own teaching, and I, I think that is part of one of the reasons why I was nominated, is uh, reflection is such a huge part of, mm -hmm. of the teaching uh, profession, and I, that's one of my 
big strengths is being able to identify what I did well and what I didn't do so well and mm. try to fix it. Well, congratulations Thank to you. you. It was nice Thank speaking you. with you. We've been speaking with Jonathan Byram, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District. Congratulations. Thank you so much for having me.